So happy because our first guest this month, we have Erica Cruzen, Senior Director of Music Cares, um, to talk about the organization. Um, music Cares provides a safety net of critical assistance for music people in times of need. We are super excited to have you. Hi, Erica. Hi, ladies. I'm so excited to be here and I'm thrilled to watch what you guys have created and how you're educating the, the greater public at large on really important issues that we all need to pay attention to. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, super excited to have you. And we just kind of wanted to start off by asking you what Music Cares is, um, how did the organization come to be? Great question. <laughs> well, quite simply, you know, music cares, it, it helps the humans behind the music. And we, we think of that as because music gives us so much, right? It gives the world so much. We can, we can go back and think about how you, you can hear any song and kind of remember back to where you were and, and just how it moved you and how, how it made you feel. So it gives us so much. So we wanted to create, like you said, a safety net of critical assistance and resources for people, for the music industry when they fall on hard times. And nothing's set up you know, for, for artists and um, crew to be able to have that place to lean on when, when times are tough. So it was founded in 1989 by the Recording Academy, which most of you guys might know is the Grammys, that, that big show every year. Um, they are the organization that puts that on. And the CEO at that time um, watched Woody Herman, this great, this jazz great, who some of you may know, um, pass away nearly destitute. And he had seen that happening too many times and called on his music industry colleagues and said, let's do something about it. And they formed what is Music Cares now. And um, Music Cares, so what we do is we operate programs. We have three main programs. One is our financial assistance program. And that program provides uh, funding for basic living expenses, such as car payments, auto insurance, health insurance, medical bills, um, senior living services, uh, tax issues, legal issues, you name it, right? And then we have a substance abuse program, which a lot of people know us as that solely, but you know, our message is trying to get out that we are essentially almost like, if you want to think of it as the Red Cross of the music industry, um, our substance abuse program, we can help people with detox, inpatient and outpatient services, sober living, and then we provide online groups, which really came out of COVID because we had eight support groups for the touring professionals to, you know, when they hit those big cities, they could hit a meeting um, to kind of keep in line and, and, you know, if they felt triggered on the road or needed some additional support, they could go to these groups. Well, now that COVID hit, we've moved everything remote and online. So it's really fantastic for those people that now we're no longer um, have to adhere to the geographical location. People anywhere can hop on those and there's eight of them. Five of them are all addiction recovery groups and three of them are just emotional support groups. So any kind of mental health or relational issues that people want to um, check in about that they can. So that's really fantastic. And then we have a disaster um, relief program. And that really started um, with Hurricane Katrina. And that disaster relief program um, covers things like COVID-19, which I'll talk about more later. And um, the, the Ca California fires or the Nashville floods and the trend of these natural disasters that we keep seeing, we knew we needed to form a disaster relief program in a sense which is unfortunate but but needed and what we do is we provide basic um, 
gift cards or expenses, you know, when, when people need to uh, relocate, they need gas, they need food, you know, maybe they need help with utilities, whatever it may be. And we're, we try to be first ones on the ground for our industry. Um, and then lastly is our, um, what we call our healthy essentials workshops and panels and clinics. And these are free to anyone in the industry. And these are all on topics that are we, we feel are necessary or important to the industry. And this could be on vocal health and hearing, repetitive stress in, injuries, um, self-care, uh, mental health, addiction recovery, mindfulness, uh, breath work. We, we just kind of cover as many of our bases for, for helping people as we can. And then a new one that we started that I love talking about is Narcan training. And uh, for those that you don't know, Narcan or Naloxone is a medication that actually reverse, reverses opioid overdose. Okay. So what we're doing with that, and we, we've joined forces with Gibson and, and a few other organizations. And um, what we're doing is we're educating people. So they'll go through a very brief training and then they get to leave with a nasal spray of, of naloxone that they can carry with them so that if they're somewhere and they find someone might be overdosing, they can help save their lives. And I think it's the, the numbers that came out are astonishing that naloxone has saved 21,000 lives a year lately. So we are always looking for those kinds of things to help the industry at large that can just offer education and more resources. It's kind of our goal is just keep searching and keep building that network of, of opportunities and, and things like that for people. Um, and then lastly, I'll just mention our eligibility because people always wonder that it's you don't have to be a Grammy member, you don't have to be a union member, um, you just have to show that you've worked in the industry and earned a living for at least five years. Those don't have to be the last five years, they don't have to be consistent either, you know. And so, if you can show us documents that you've worked in the industry in some way, not just an artist. Like you could be a stagehand, a lighting um, technician, and producer, engineer, or music executive. So it's it's pretty fantastic. You can tell, I hope, that I'm really passionate about what we do. That sounds so awesome and so great. Um, and then we were also wondering, what's your personal story um, with music hair? And like, how did you get involved? What was the thing that you love so much about it that made you want to be a part of it? Well, you know, I lived in Seattle for a while and I was studying um, psychotherapy to, and I'm a licensed therapist now. And um, it, I knew I had a lot of friends and family in the industry and I watched how much Music Cares was walking the walk. You know what I mean? They, I watched so many of our friends get the help that they needed and, and especially in the addiction world. and. Um, it was it was amazing how fast that they could help people and how wide their resources went. And so I stayed in touch with them. I went to graduate school. Um, I volunteered throughout the years for them. And um, and then after graduate school, when I started my own practice, I offered free or low cost services to their industry professionals. And then it kind of turned into, well, actually we have a job for you. <laughs> that would be really great. And so of course I, I took it and, um, and it's, it's been a blessing, um, you know, ever, ever since. But the things that I really love that I, I love talking about is, um, you know, our team is small, but fierce and we're very service minded. We are compassionate. We all love music. We all know, um, that struggle um, with friends or family that, that are in the industry that have needed some support. And um, all, all of the directors for our health and human services teams are all licensed social workers, counselors, chemical dependency counselors, or therapists. And so people can know when they reach out, they're going to get a proper assessment and, and get those words you know that they need for for help and know that they can we can get them to the right right people and, and places and then you know we work really hard and diligently to um 
expand our outreach to the underserved and the underrepresented uh, communities. And that means a lot to me. Wow. Yeah, that's all. That's incredible. And I didn't even, I mean, I, I've known what Music Cares is and I've known that it's part of the Grammys and the Academy, but I mean, I didn't know all of that. So that's incredible. And like you said, you guys, you know, care about a lot of different people as in everyone involved yeah, um, and all the issues. And so all of those topics, I guess, are all have the common theme of creating and more specifically, you know, creating music. Yeah. Um, and so just tell us like why that's so important to keep people creating and, and keep those that are in the music industry. Okay. You know, yeah. You know, we, um, like our mission states, we care about the human behind the music and, um, their health and wellness is so important to us. And, you know, we recognize that a, a band is not a band without all of these other people. A song is not a song, a show, right? Um, and, and so we want to make sure that we are, when we want to cover everyone that goes into it, you know, and, and the Academy does a good job trying to recognize that too, of, of there's an emphasis this year on, on really highlighting all the people that go into making a show or making a performance. And, you know, we have to remember that a lot of those people are, you know, paycheck to paycheck. There's no 401ks and there's no, uh, savings, you know, for a lot of these people and they're on show to show or band to band, you know what I mean? And, or venues. And so there has to be something out there that, that helps them. And, and we recognize that there's a lot of charities that will help certain genres or certain types of people. And we want to be all inclusive and, and help so many, because we know that, the longevity and the creativity of the music that we all love, it's going to go away if there's not someone or the industry supporting that other side, right? That emotional health and wellness side. So just as the industry is pushing our artists and, and crew to keep going and trucking along on those tours, we need that other side to really take care of them. Yeah, totally. And you mentioned this a little before earlier, but uh, COVID is affecting musicians. So we were curious um, in your kind of what you, from what you've seen and in your experience, how are you seeing um, the pandemic affecting musicians, big or small? Um, and then also, how is it affecting the music industry just as a whole? You know, I mean, that is that is the big topic, right? Um, you know, the list of artists making the multi-million dollar payout from tours is is small, and and those groups are likely able to weather the storm. But the many thousands of of others, you know, the the furloughed workers and the crew and all of that who have to, you know, take the time to service our Starbucks or bag our groceries on the side, you know, to continue doing what they love is, you know, is a larger group. And so when a disaster like this hits, like COVID, they have few places to turn. So, you know, I'm not sure if you guys yesterday um, watched or, or logged into the Senate hearings for the music industry, um, but what they were talking about, you know, they were, it was the second conversation during COVID to say, hey, this industry needs some help. You know, if we don't, if we don't get some aid, we're going to have a much bigger problem, almost like the, the uh, restaurant industry, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we know from this is, you know, this industry is an $877 billion industry that employs 10 million people across the globe, right? And 90% of independent venues are going to close if they don't start receiving some federal aid. Um, you know, an, another takeaway was 70 to 90% of, of artists and crew make 100% of their income in live performance. It's all gone, right? And without the, the PPP aid that we got in April, I believe, um, that was used up by June for most people, if we don't receive that again, or this industry doesn't receive that again, we are going to see these clothes and it's gonna and 
be quite disastrous. And, you know, and I could go on and on about how that not only affects our industry, but the smaller businesses that are supported along with that industry, you know, like if you take, take a, take a venue, an independent venue, and there's food services, right? There's tons of people around that in the inner cities that are supported by that venue and tourism and people coming in for shows. So <clears throat> we really need to continue pushing for additional aid. And, you know, the, the vaccine is, is one thing and, and hopefully that will help and people will, um, choose to get it and we'll put some other parameters in place for these for music touring to come back but you know it's it's somewhat somewhat bleak mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's that's right now and then do you you know have you guys had conversations and what is the plan for when small you know things are starting to come back um because like there's so many possible outcomes from COVID for a lot of struggling musicians right now. But like, like you said, after, you know, the small venues and the smaller artists and just the, you know, stage hands, everyone, you know, crew. Um, so yeah, like what are some of the possible outcomes for once COVID is settled down, just the backlash from it? Well, it's interesting because as we gone along, there's been a lot of positive and negatives to COVID, right, for everyone. But with the industry, you know, we've seen people pivot, you know, because they had to. So I've had clients that have called and said they they got construction jobs or one of them became a baker, you know, and, and started selling cinnamon rolls and, you know, or or they used their skills with production and they moved it to TV and film, you know, because that's still going and they were able to, to pivot in that way. Um, you know, some are doing the live streams and podcasts and they're writing and producing, which I think we're going to get some really amazing music next year um, from, from clients that I've heard the, that it's, I mean, everyone's doing a record. So we're gonna be flooded, which is gonna be awesome. But the downside is you know, we have seen mental health and addiction on the rise, you know, because there isn't the aid and the help and people can't, um, can't cope during this time. And so Music Cares has been there to really try and address that with more of those panels I was talking about, more of the education, building our network to be stronger, um, to catch them, you know, and, and offer them support. But, um, you know, things are going, going to be different and how that differs i don't i'm i'm not sure you know we're we're watching all of that because not everybody's going to get the covid vaccine there's a there's a lot of communities that don't want to do it um for good reason you know and there are some and they're going to need the additional aid down the road but i think there is some hope starting to happen in my talks with managers and agents they're starting to get excited about rescheduling some of those tours that they had planned for um, they're going to do in the talk is end of summer and fall. And so that's exciting. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can get some aid in there. We can get some resources and be able to carry people a little bit longer. That's really, really important and great work. Um, and we were wondering, is there one accomplishment that Music Cares has done or taken part in that's like especially impressive to you or you're especially proud of? Well, there's two. Um, so I would be re absolutely remiss in not mentioning our COVID relief efforts, you know, um, in a year when musicians and concert industry personnel have been thrown completely out of work, Music Cares was indispensable. You know, in March, along with the Recording Academy, we announced a $2 million COVID relief fund and the outpouring of donations from artists doing live streams or just general donations to PROs and music and tech companies and, you know, just individuals that wanted to help, we were able to raise an additional $20 million. And so that really speaks to the humanitarian spirit of the industry as a whole, which I'm so proud of. But since March, I'm proud to say that Music Cares was able to provide 21,000 clients with $22 million in aid. I mean, it's just 
it's mind blowing. And if you guys can think about this in a given year without a disaster, Music Cares will provide roughly six and a half million dollars to about 7,500 people. So we tripled um, the numbers, what we normally do. And like I said, we're a tiny team. So I, I, I'm so proud of our team and the organization and the industry for taking that on and really stepping up, you know, when everything shut down. Um, and then I would say the last thing that I always like to mention is Music Cares um, received, well, has received seven years in a row, the highest ranking in Charity Navigator. And if you don't know what that is, it's the kind of the, the nation's leading watchdog for charities. And it, it's important to us because when you're, tr you're hoping for grants and donors to help support your organization, this organization, Charity Navigator, the, the, the watchdog of, sort, of sorts, is um, they do an assessment of, of, every organ of every foundation based on your financial health and your accountability and your transparency to the general public. And so seven years in a row, we've got that um, four-star uh, ranking. So I'm really proud of that. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, I think we asked that question because we think that will truly inspire people to take action um, and, you know, be a part of all the great work that you guys are doing. So thank you so much for joining us today and getting to share that. Um, thank you. We're, we're, we feel lucky that we get to talk about it. Um, so now that the conversation is over, like we always say, it's time to take action. So go to the website at musiccares.org and take action. There's so many acts ranging from, like she said, COVID relief um, for musicians and everyone else, and then to saving the stages. So you can also donate directly to the charity or share this interview and get people educated and excited about the important work that they're doing at Music Care. So thank you so much, Erica. It was thank so good to talk to you and meet you. And um, So awesome. I'm so proud of you guys. I hope this, this is the, um, the way that our next generation is.